Damian Shanklin is an outlier. One of the top 2025 edge rushers in the country out of Warren Central High School in Indianapolis, Shanklin is committed to the LSU Tigers without asking for NIL, cutting off contact with other schools who have been recruiting him fiercely. It would appear that Shanklin exemplifies the type of player, an authentic commitment, that Coach Brian Kelly described in an interview last May with Jock Doucette. We're not in the market of buying players. And, and unfortunately, right now, um, you know, that's, uh, that's what some guys are looking for. So Kelly, as he says, is not in the market of buying players. And it looks like he's in the process of building a top recruiting class for the 2025 season while avoiding having to resort to that strategy. Five-star recruit and top prospect Bryce Underwood, Harlan Berry, one of the top running backs in the class of 2025, and now Damian Shanklin, who committed this past weekend. There are no official statistics, but these guys don't appear to be the norm. But what exactly in today's college sports landscape does a commitment really mean? Tiger Rag Magazine editor Todd Horn expresses this plainly to Jeff Palermo, the news and sports director of the Louisiana Radio Network. You got some hot takes for us tonight? Uh, I'm interested to, t to hear what Matthew, Matthew has to say about some of these commitments, because yeah. I still don't understand what a commitment is. <laughs> I'm scratching my head too, Todd. The Matthew he is referring to is Matthew Bruni of On3 Sports. Back in the day, there certainly were some signing day surprises, but now with countless players committing, decommitting, and leveraging NIL deals to go to other universities, what weight does a player's commitment carry in today's game? Jeff and Todd spoke with Matthew, who details an interesting answer. All right, so this is a real question. It's going to sound facetious, but it's really not. I'm, I'm actually very serious. What does it mean today in college football, especially since we're talking about that, to commit six to nine months before um, before signing day? What, what does it even mean? Because is there some type of meaning of it? Like, you know, uh, the Corian Moore commits early, then backs off. These guys commit and they start taking visits. Are they back up? Why do they do that? What's the charade about? What's the importance of a commit right now at yeah, this time? Yeah, the, the way I approach it is there's two different types of commits. There are the ones that are locked in, like you see with Bryce Underwood, who committed to LSU, number one player in the country, number one quarterback, uh, and has not taken any visits. He's been 100% locked in. He's, uh, you know, shown love to LSU every step of the way. Uh, he has given LSU no reason to think that he will do anything other than sign. Uh, uh, Harlem Berry, same thing, awesome running back prospect. Um, he'll sign with LSU. Um, and then you have the other situations, like a DeCorian Moore, like uh, the players you talked about that will commit and then continue to take visits. Um, I think from a, I don't want to say cynical standpoint, but from that standpoint, I think you can definitely make an argument that you commit to maybe gain leverage. Um, uh, and I do think with the NIL being as prominent as it is, you know, in the recruiting space, I think, um, you can commit to a school and raise your le leverage like the Corian Moore, I think did with Texas and Oregon once he decommitted from LSU. I, I just think that's kind of the situation we're in right now. So, um, and you know, even, and I'm even, I'm sure Bryce Underwood, I don't know this, but I'm sure Bryce Underwood is, is getting phone calls every day, but he's just maybe not answering them or he doesn't care. Um, he just really wants to be at LSU. So there are two different types of commits. Uh, I can understand, you know, after seeing what we've seen, but that you would, that every, anybody would be skeptical. But even before NIL, this was a thing where players would commit and then continue taking offers. There's just, in my mind, there's two different types. And if you, if a player is the latter where they continue to take visits and continue to talk about other teams, then they're really not committed until they put the pen to paper. So, let's get back to Shanklin. If gaining authentic commitments without resorting to paying for players is Brian Kelly's goal in this recruiting process, then Damian Shanklin's a true representation of this approach. I can't think of a better person to tell the story of Shanklin's recruitment than his high school coach at Warren Central, Michael Kirshner. I'm your host, Jay McMains, and Jeff and Todd sit down with Coach Kirshner to discuss Shanklin's journey so far right after a message from our sponsor. July is jumping at your East Baton Rouge Parish Library. 
Lots of books are being read as part of their summer reading program. Adults are finding the way of nature through Tai Chi classes. While little ones gear up for back to school with enrichment programs like Big Buds and Carver Cubs. And for teens, how about Twinkie Wars, Bubble Science, or Percy Jackson Trivia? Go online at ebrpl.com to learn more. That's ebrpl.com. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Tiger Rag Radio is on the right, air. Let's crank this thing up. We're statewide, breaking down the latest happenings with LSU Athletics. This is us. Hear from the coaches. We're put together a defense that puts us in a position to win the SEC. The players. Having fun and we work it, baby. That's it, man. The recruits. Yeah, show some passion and some heart. And those who cover the fighting Tigers of LSU and the SEC. All those things are going to be there, which are important. It's two hours of nonstop LSU talk. What a privilege. I mean, you get to represent LSU. Tiger Rag Radio is brought to you by Cummins. Cummins creates power solutions that the world depends on. Helm Paint and Decorating. The paint experts of Louisiana. Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Max Home. And the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Get ready to talk Tigers with producer Jackson Blackman and our hosts, Todd Horn and Jeff Palermo. Three great players that are better people than they are players. This is Tiger Rag Radio. Hey, we're back here on Tiger Rag Radio. Looking forward to talking to our next guest on the Max Home Hotline. Over 50,000 Max Happy Homeowners and Counting. That's Michael Kirshner. He's the head high school football coach at Warren Central High School in Indianapolis. He's got a stud defensive end, a four-star edge rusher, and Damian Shanklin, who committed to the LSU Tigers over the weekend. Uh, Coach Kirshner, thanks a lot for joining us. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks. I appreciate you having me, and I appreciate you covering our kids. Yeah, it's great to have you on. Uh, tell us a little bit about Damian Shanklin and how LSU came across uh, recruiting him. Well, D- Damian is, is uh, as you know, he's 6'5", about 250 pounds, very athletic young man, um, two-sport kid, throw shot and disc and track. Um, I met Damien when he was in the eighth grade, um, and he was already about six foot one, and uh, thought that was he was a pretty special kid then. Um, what makes him really special on the field is his athleticism. Uh, he's, he's got great hips, runs the corner really well, uh, great pass rush technique. Uh, very coachable young man, uh, fun, fun to be around, um, been part of his life now for the last four years, four plus years. And, um, j- just been a real pleasure for me to, to be part of his life and, and his journey of getting to this. When it came to the recruiting, he became a national recruit, uh, shortly after his sophomore season, uh, Notre Dame offered first, and then it kind of snowballed from there. Um, have a little bit of connections. I've had, I had a couple kids play at Notre Dame for coach Kelly. So I, I know Coach Kelly, and then um, Coach Peebles, the D-line coach, coached with my son-in-law at IU several years ago, and uh, so I had a little bit of a connection there. And um, Damian, when he went down for an unofficial visit, he went down for a game last last fall, and and his reaction when he came home was was pretty special. You could tell he couldn't stop talking about what a special atmosphere, you know, he'd been to Michigan, he'd been to Notre Dame, he'd been to Tennessee, he'd been to a lot of different games, but he said the atmosphere in Tiger stadium was, was just so unique and and so special. I could tell by the look in his eye, it meant something to him. Coach, do you happen to recall what game that was just out of curiosity? I I, I do not. I do not. One of my coaches took him down and then he took another visit in, in the spring with my assistant AD uh, I'm the athletic director here at Warren, and, and my assistant took him down because his son is a student assistant on the staff, and um, so we have a little connection there too. But uh, um, I, I just I, he said he said you just can't he said I just can't put into words what it meant, you know. And I've I've been to a lot of college games, obviously in my forty some years of coaching, but um, he, he's um, he, he just he like I said he just lights up when he sees it. So I've never been to Tiger Stadium. I heard it's I heard it's special. That's all I know. What what is it that I mean, you've been coaching for this long. You've obviously had other players that have been recruited through the years, through the decades, I would assume. How different is recruiting today than it was, say, even ten years ago, five years ago, for for these kids and for the coaches like yourself? Uh quite different. Uh and the rules keep changing. You know, it used to be in 
January and early February, they'd come in and they'd just get a look at the kid. They weren't allowed to meet with him. Now they're allowed to meet with him in January. I mean, there was, there was a, a day in my office where, and I've got another DN that's just committed to Louisville and an offensive lineman that just committed to Iowa. And, and But there was a day in January where I had three big-time schools sitting in my office. So Damien's in my conference room meeting with Texas, and in my office is Oregon, Washington, and West Virginia. The kid never got to class. He spent all the whole day sitting there talking to coaches, trying to convince him to come to their school. So that, that part's got, gotten a little bit out of whack. Um, you know, Damien's never asked about NIL money or anything like that. That doesn't really seem to bother him one way or the other, nor does he care. Um, he just wants to play at the highest level. Um, the amount of official visits in the summer, you know, he went on four, so he was gone every Friday, Saturday, Sunday of June. You know, he went, he made an official visit to Alabama, Ohio State, Tennessee, and, and LSU. And uh, so that part of it used to be, you know, 10 years ago, the kid wouldn't take an official visit till his senior season was over. Now you're taking him before our senior year even starts. And, and you know, the pressure on the kids is greater. And, and when you're talking about some of my kids who come from one-parent homes or, in some cases, no-parent homes, you know, they're living with one of my coaches or something like that, that it's, it's tough. It's tough for them to make that decision. So when Damien made that decision last Friday – um, the emotion when he's hugging his mom and his his uncle who really helped in the process, and he's just bawling like a baby. You could tell that having the decision finalized and done was very important to him, and a lot of uh, a lot of stress was taken off of him at that point. Was well, that the primary reason for him to make the commitment now, rather than wait three or four months before deciding? Yeah, he wanted to go into his senior year and enjoy being a senior and and playing football at Warren central. Uh, it's a place he's grown up. He played little league ball here. He's been a, he's been a kid in this program from the time he was third grade. And so he wanted that over with, he wanted to just be able to focus on being a football player and being a senior, you know, he's going to be an early enrollee. So he'll be down in, down in Baton Rouge in, in January. Um, and he wanted to get that over with so he can enjoy these last months of being a high school kid. Well, just, this, this is going to sound like an odd question, but how do you, protect him from the the recruiters that are still going to want to come after him, even though he's committed and maybe not want to honor his, his, you know, desire to be left alone. Yeah. Well, that, that's tough. Um, and I tell him, look, we, we made him call every school that he was not going to accept. So that connection was already made that I've made my decision. Here's where I'm going. And then we also told him as, as we make him call everybody, we make all our kids call everybody that's recruiting them. We just think that's the adult thing to do. And, um, you know, we, we, we tell them that they're firm and if you have any questions, they can call me. Uh-huh. And then I become the, the go between. Interesting. He's six, four two thirty at the moment, right? Coach somewhere around no, there? He's six, he's six, five, two fifty two. Oh, okay. That's with his shoes off. That's with his shoes off. All right. So he's how much bigger you think he's going to get? I don't know. He might be down a couple pounds. We we had a conditioning workout tonight. We had to run. We had to run forty. We ran forty forties for time tonight. So okay. it, was, it was pretty brutal. So he might be down a couple pounds tonight. But I don't know if he's done growing or not. You know, he's he's already bigger than than any family member that he yeah. has. But uh, I, I think he can put on weight. He already cleans three hundred pounds. You know, benches three hundred pounds. So he's he's already got a lot of muscle on his body. Um, I, I you know and I. Again, I'm going into my 41st season, and and he, he ranks up there as one of the top four or five, not not athletes, but just one of the better kids, man. You know, he's he's had a tough home life, uh, th- things that people don't know about that I do, and uh, in spite of that, he cares genuinely about people. He cares about his teammates. He cares about his community. Um, he does community service with his East Side cleanup, food giveaway. Um, we have a big thing we do every every. Um, uh, Thanksgiving, when we go door to door and deliver uh, uh, groceries and food to people at Thanksgiving, and he does that for us. Um, he's just a special kind of kid. Sounds like it. Hey, Coach Kirshner, thanks a lot for joining us. Appreciate it. This was uh, great. Thanks for telling us a little more about Damian Shanklin. Have a, I hope he has a great senior season. How does your team look ne- uh, this upcoming season? Well, we'll be all right. We, we 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 got some talented kids. We got about eight D one kids, so we'll, we'll see how we do. All right, thanks, Coach. We appreciate your time tonight.
Well, excellent interview there with Coach Kirshner. Thank you, Jeff and Todd. That original question that Todd asked, in today's world of NIL, what exactly does a commitment mean? For our answer, we just have to look at the recruitment strategies and goals currently being utilized by Coach Kelly, and more specifically, at players like Damian Shanklin. That'll be it for today's episode, but we'll be back later this week. Until then, stay tuned to TigerRag.com for all your latest LSU sports news.